Well, this is our first day together, and this is our third video. And what I want to do in each of these third videos for the next uh, 17 days is to share with you a spiritual practice to make our intellectual and historical and comparative study real by, by con and to convert that into insights for ourselves through a practice. Now, um, Sir John was an eminently practical person. I like to think of him as a, as a practical mystic and even a saint of the practical life. He was renowned for his wisdom as an investor, and he made a lot of money for a lot of people. But he turned his own attention later in life away from that world, and when he sold his, uh, his businesses, to uh, full-time participation and activity, trying to promote a further understanding of, of religion, spirituality, and science. And one of these spiritual practices, which the first one that I'd like to share with you today is drawn from uh, Sir, Sir John's book, and it can be expressed in this way. Lift your awareness to a higher level of receptivity. Lift your awareness to a higher level of receptivity. Now, this is uh, an ancient call. This is the ancient call of all of the contemplative traditions. It, they call us to, for a time at least, put the world as that, that our senses and minds are so in, absorbed in, to put that to the side for a while. Doesn't mean to neglect it, to run away from it, to erase it, but for a few minutes at least, to kind of create a quiet oasis for yourself, a place of freedom and peace, where for a few minutes at least, you can uh, rejuvenate and restore yourself by bathing your mind in the spiritual wisdom of the ages. Now, in these meditations that I will be suggesting to you over the next days, there are two basic approaches. Uh, one basic approach is the kind of meditation that many of us first think of when we hear that word. That is, we sit down somewhere, we close our eyes, and we focus on something. And the image that may come to mind is that of Buddha sitting under the Bodhi tree, because he is, of course, the classic universal example, it seems, of someone, of the meditator, of the great meditator. And many of, our, of these exercises will be just that. But there's another aspect to a meditation or contemplative practice that's equally as important, and that is that that is when we attain insights, when we see the nature of what's real because of this concentrative practice. And now, it's not, and we can come to this place of clarified awareness, this higher level of receptivity by quieting the mind and becoming still, or we can deeply reflect upon a spiritual idea, teaching, or truth, and eventually our minds will also become still and insights will begin to arise. So those are the two, those are two kinds of meditation that I'll be working on with you here. So today, uh, I want to start with a, with a reflective practice. And uh, we have the material close to hand in Sir John's own words. When he, uh, in the introduction to his book, um, he points out that since ancient times, people have pondered or thought deeply, reflected, about a small number of ageless or perennial questions. And it doesn't take much time to create our own list of such questions. And his list is pretty straightforward. Who am I? Why am I here on planet Earth? What does the future hold? How can I get along better with people in my life? And how can I be successful in my work? How can my life be useful and happy? And I would add a few more to this, as I framed in some of the introductory materials for this course. Does life have an ultimate meaning? Is science the ultimate guide to the deepest truth of life? Does God or a divine reality exist? What practices can bring God or divine reality into my own experience? And is death the end of life? And Sir John, and I would agree, thinks that by reflecting deeply upon such questions, we can raise our, our awareness to a higher level of receptivity.
Now, I do know that there is a tendency at moments like this perhaps to become skeptical or to silence ourselves and even to squelch our, our spiritual nature, which may be speaking to us at different times and calling us to, in my case, to put the newspaper, which I don't read in physical form, which I read on my smartphone, uh, in, in, important, interesting information, but there's more to life than that. There's more to life than the current political turmoil or whatever else may be the case. Um, there's a great story I love uh, from, uh, from the Taoist tradition, uh, from the, 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 the wry, wise, and, and canny old philosopher of ancient China who is known as Zhuangzi. He tells the story of the well frog. Now, the well frog uh, lived at the bottom of a well on a little outcropping of moss-colored rock and below the well frog could see uh, the, the, uh, a little bit of water, a circle of water at the bottom of the well. And looking up, the well frog could see the sky and could see the, the stars and the, the pass and the sun and the moon and the weather and was delighted to have such a wonderful perch, a piece of waterfront property with a view of the sky. Quite happy, quite delighted uh, with this uh, setting. And one day, a cousin of the well frog, a frog who lived at the sea, came visiting. And the well frog was, had never been outside of the well and was, was, was boasting about how wonderful uh, uh, their, uh, their perch was and their, their, their well frog uh, uh, vista, to which the sea frog harumphed and snorted and said, how can you compare this little miserable bit of water to the sea? And in, I suppose, I don't, in my telling of the story, the well, I, if I were the well frog, and in many areas of life, I'm a well frog. I'm not in all, I don't, I don't think, but in many, many, many areas, I might have said, oh, oh, let me go see the sea so I can compare. But in this story, the well frog actually says, who is this imposter? Cast this imposter out. So that story has a bite. And it's meant to call me and whoever else may want to hear the story to not be a well frog. And when in matters of spirit, it is so easy to be a well frog in two ways. One way to be a well frog is to assume that my spirituality is the only spirituality for everyone. Um, and another way of being a well frog is to assume that there is no such thing as spirituality, that only a materialistic understanding of life guided by a materialistic, reductionistic science, and I'm not against science by any means, but, but as a philosopher, I know that you can have a broader metaphysical picture than that. That's kind of being a well frog, too. So lifting our awareness to a higher level of receptivity means a putting off our own inner well frog and becoming more like the sea frog. All right, so in the minute or so that's remaining to us, I would like to introduce you uh, to a, uh, a kind of reflective practice that can also lead into a deep contemplation. And I'll have more to say about these practices as, as time goes on. But the Buddha, one of the great uh, figures in the spiritual life of humanity, taught a way to supreme happiness, uh, sukha instead of dukkha, more about that later, by well, fundamentally, he taught mindfulness in its various forms. That's one of the techniques that he taught. Well, what is mindfulness? In, 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 in short, mindfulness is not living in accordance with our habitual tendencies. Mindfulness is the opposite of, of habitual living. And the Buddha, he taught people how to overcome their habit-forming tendency to just roll along and take things as they come by becoming profoundly mindful. How do you do that? Well, he asked them to become uh, aware of uh, where they are. Where are we sitting? What is this place? And what is it that we're sensing or what? that we're feeling. Become profoundly aware in this moment of the, of the texture of your clothing against your skin or of the temperature of the air upon your skin. If you could just do that with unbroken concentration for a few days, you would attain nirvana or enlightenment for, fairly quickly. Hey, the Buddha even promises that, even within a week. Um, then to become, uh, prof to become mindfully aware of what you're feeling right now. What is your inner life like? What moods are, are, are passing through your consciousness? And, and then you can become aware of your judgments, of your values, of your evaluations, of your, of your criticizing mind. 
and without criticizing it. And then finally, you can become aware of your whole ensemble of being as this kind of complex set of processes that, are, that are, rise and fall against a radiant background of utter freedom. And what we want to do in the next week, days together is to try to experience that ground of radiance, that ground of utter freedom in which we're no longer well frog or sea frog, but we exist without, without hesitation or inhibition as free beings within the free flow of life.